Smash! <laughs> Bizarre Brain Comics. here for Bizarre Brain Comics. Hmm. This is where I'd like to take a look at some older comics and talk about them, talk about the, the, art, the art, the writing, and the creators. This time I'm not going to have so much about the creators. This time we're doing a 19 from, this is from, a 1975 Marvel Treasury Edition Giant Superhero holiday grab bag since we're coming up on Christmas. This is the holiday time. I'm not a big Christmas person, but some people are. And I thought we would get into that a little bit. This book, like I said, is from 1975 and it's got a uh, a Nick Fury story, a Spider-Man story, a Luke Cage story, and a Doctor Strange story. But what we're going to look at is the Hulk story. Now, none of these stories are actually related directly to, to Christmas or, or the holidays. But... Um, they, they're they just uh, stories which are concurrent with or around Christmas time. And Chris, so Christmas plays a, a small role in the stories, except for this Hulk story. And I really liked this Hulk story, which is why I chose it. Uh, because it doesn't have really anything to do with, with Christmas or the holidays or anything like that. So I don't know why it was it was put in this holiday grab bag. Except maybe as a filler. But it's a good story, and we're going to take a look at it. This, this is a story, and it is titled, Heaven is a Very Small Place. Uh, written by Roy Thomas, drawn by Herb Trimp, with great inking done by John Severn. They did, those guys worked together a lot in, um, in the 60s. And I think... Uh, the John Severin inks really, really uh, uh, does a lot to um, punch up Herb Trimp's pencils. Uh, and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying anything bad about Herb, Herb Trimp, but it kind of puts a little bit more earth to it. It's the only way I can think of it. So... Without further ado, let's go take a look at this Hulk story inside the giant superhero holiday grab bag. Hmm. Here you get a better view of the cover. Try to get some of that glare off of it. Yeah, this is a big one. That's what she said. Um... <clears throat> Lots of stories in there. Nice, nice cover. Uh, I think that's a John Romita cover. I don't see any credit on there, but it looks, it looks kind of Romita-ish. So it could be. Here, just take a little look. See, even the, this is the, uh, this right here is the um, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. story, and it's, a, and it is titled, was the night before Christmas but it so it just takes place but it's it's just a, a regular action packed Nick Fury story and in fact I thought this who, who did the art, art uh, Gary Friedrich was the writer Frank Springer was the penciler and I thought that this looked 
a lot like uh, Herb Trimp art, other than Frank Springer, but you know. And then we got getting to the Spider-Man story after that, as Steve Ditko, yeah, and it again it isn't really about Christmas. Just has some Christmas there. Then we get some Luke Cage. Again, at Christmas time, the part takes place in the snow. And then it, at the end is the uh, the um, Doctor Strange story again at Christmas time in the snow. Some really nice Gene Cullen artwork. This is in the uh, period of time when uh, uh, when Doctor Strange wore a mask. But we can do without that. Okay, but what we're going to do here is talk about this story right here, which is the Hulk story. Heaven and this book is not wanting to cooperate. There's a Heaven is a very small place. No, I like the way the way it starts here. It's the Incredible Hulk. Hulk smash! With this this series of uh, of panels, uh, which is all one one scene, but showing uh, the passage of time as the as the Hulk comes around that. The, around the rocks, around the hill, and he's not happy. He's out in the desert, as he often was in Southwest Arizona, Nevada area. He's always on the lookout for someone, because someone wants to. It's always pestering him, and Hulk has to smash. Here's but he's out in the desert and said, "Look, what's what's that ahead? I see something up there." I guess Hulk is talking to himself. He doesn't. He doesn't think and think uh, thought balloons. Uh, when Hulk thinks something, he always speaks out loud. When he can speak at all. And here he is out in the desert, and he's just kind of appearing. This this town just kind of appears. And says, "Do you see? Do you see it, reader? Ordered gardens and well kept streets, church spire presiding benevolently over." Wood frame bungalows, brick and stone. And do you hear as well? Can you sense the nearly audible whisper that says, Mirage, Mirage? So it appears to be some kind of mirage, but he approaches, the town stays there. He approaches, takes the, takes the road that didn't exist before. Walks into the, into the town, because Hulk is thirsty. And if there's a town, there's, there, can be, there can be water. And he walks into, right into town, there are people playing, riding around on their bicycles, uh, he's in in the street, and this fellow walks by and just tips his hat to him. No one, no one is startled, or afraid. No one's afraid of the Hulk, and he's talking to himself. Everybody acts the same, just like Hulk wasn't here. This is the way Hulk always wanted it to be, the way Hulk dreamed it would be. And then this, this, all these people around here. Then there's something. Something behind him. What? He's, he spins around. What is it? It's some big machine bearing down on him. Hulk's ready to smash it, but no, no, it wasn't. It's just, it's just a street sweeping machine. I like the detail in this movie. Whether it's accurate or not, I don't know. It makes it look accurate. See, I also have really nice hair on the, the, the streets, the, the fact of the streets, the houses. Very nice. Nicely drawn, nicely rendered. Just looks like a regular small town, and it's just a street sweeping machine. He's not attacking the Hulk, and the driver is waving to him. And then there's these children waiting to cross the street under this tree. And no one pays any attention to Hulk. How can that be? Hulk doesn't understand this place. He likes it here. Yeah, this is very sweet, peaceful. No one, no one bothers him. What's going on? Here's then he sees this girl in a wheelchair who's just looking at him. A girl just sitting there, looking at Hulk, smiling at Hulk. She smiles, but she doesn't talk. And he approaches the girl, and she speaks to him. 
It's like the only sound he hears. And she calls him friend. I'm so glad to see you. And you can talk? I said, yes. Yes, I, of course. I sh and we shall talk. And they talk. And and she's friendly to him. And Hulk is friendly. And Hulk is so, so happy. He's found someone to be a, a friend. Did Hulk say something? But she looks, she looks odd. And he's, Hulk goes to take her, her hand. Goes to take the hand of his new friend. And his hand passes right through her. And she just dissolves into nothingness. No, she is gone. She is gone. And then that kind of enrages Hulk. What is wrong? And here we see as Hulk gets up and moves around, he starts passing right through what or otherwise solid objects. And all the people, all the buildings, the whole town, the whole town is just fading away, disappearing. What? What is happening to Hulk? No, it is not... Not happening to Hulk, it is happening to the town. And here, the whole town is fading away. And all he can hear is the sound of the wind in the desert. Come back! And Hulk is aghast. And he sees here, he is alone again in the desert. And then... And it, in lonesome rage, he smashes the ground. But he's all by himself. He's all alone in the desert. Then we see, some distance away, we don't know how far. Holy cow, will you look at the seismograph, Bob? It's going crazy. Yeah, there's some kind of... It's really nice. Really nice rendering of the technology in the background in here. Herb Trimp, John Severn, they did a really good, really nice job. I've talked more about uh, uh, John Severn before, and I've mentioned Herb Trimp, but I haven't talked much about him yet. Well, we'll get to him another time. See? There's this something like a, a, a tremor out in the middle of the desert. Well, there's no one there, so there was nobody around to be hurt by it. Nobody at all. And I think I think that's, that's kind of sad. Here's the Hulk. It was just some kind of weird mirage. We saw this town, people, maybe brought on by thirst and the heat and the loneliness and the desert. And he saw all these people who were, who were either ignoring him or friendly to him. He found a friend and it was all, seemed to be all in his mind. When I first read this, I thought it was some kind of a hologram. But, but apparently, no, it was, it was just in, in, the Hulk's, in the Hulk's mind. And I think that's very sad. The Hulk being all alone when all he wants is a friend. No no villains to to fight. No people to save. No one tormenting him, only the torment of his own mind. And then here's the back cover. All those characters. <laughs> with Santa Claus. Uh, Merry Marvel Seasons greetings to one and all. Yeah. But I think that story is kind of sad. Well, so that's all I've got for this. It's just well, a little shorter one. It was a shorter story. I enjoyed it, but it is, is a sad story. I think. I hope you liked it. Please like Share and subscribe if you haven't haven't already. Share it with your other comic book friends. They may enjoy it as well. Remember, comics are art. Friend? <laughs>